Hi friends, I'm Chrissy. Welcome to the Yoga Still. And today I want to give you a tour of the Color Mage deck. Now this deck is pricey. I've had it for years. Um, I learned about it from Samantha Menzo and I love it. Um, I use this deck for a while. Um, with I do a card each day for my yoga practice and I thought this was a really good card, a really good deck for that purpose. It's really nice card stock, but there are a ton of cards. There are 108 cards, which does make it a challenge to shuffle. I'll show you how I typically shuffle this deck. This deck did not come with any sort of box or wrapping of any sort. I use this bag that my friend Cassie <laughs> gave me several Christmases ago. And I'm just like, how, how perfect is this bag for this deck? And it fits right in. So this deck is arranged by color all the way up to card 80 something, 83. And then at 84, it turns into these beautiful, oh my goodness, these beautiful mixes of colors. So since there's 108, I'm gonna fl fly through these pretty quick. I do tend to understand these from a chakra standpoint. I really wish there was a mid-range, like Pantone type deck. I've got the um, Kaleidodope deck, the, the Chakra Swatches deck. There's a review of that, a flip through of that as well. It's a deck of maybe 30-ish cards. And then we have this deck of 108. I really wish there was something in the middle, <laughs> something in like the 50 to 80 range that was that had more depth, more variety than the chakra swatches, but not as much handling as, re as of required with this 108 card deck. So they are numbered. Other than putting them in order, there's no reason for them to be numbered because this deck does not come with a guidebook. Um, there are options to purchase um, a PDF online to go with these, but if I remember correctly, it's more of a journal than it is an actual guidebook, but I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, it'll be in the comments. So for the reds, we have burgundy, red merlot, Scarlet, Ruby Rose, Grapefruit, it's my favorite essential oil, Coral, Dahlia, Sunset Joy, Melon Pink, and Himalaya. We start moving into the oranges. Snuggle, how fun is this card? Light Apricot, Dark Apricot, Pink, Gary, hmm. Peach, Orange, Tangerine, Salmon, Desert Sand. If I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm not going to try. I'll just raise it up to you so you can see. And you can also see that there is a very small phrase on each of these cards. Now, this card, this phrase is not always readable. There are some cards that I have to take a picture with my phone and turn the contrast way up to be able to read the tagline on the cards. Yellow sand. Very hard to read, but it says give it time. I just know because I've looked at it. I've, 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 I've taken the picture and modified it before. This makes it a really hard deck to read with live. It's okay for recordings, but it's hard to read with live because this is not always discernible. Buttercup. Firefly. I love Goldenrod. Gold. Sunflower. El Sol, and then we move into, oh, I guess we've been in the oranges for a bit. Pumpkin, Honey, Legion. Moving into the greens, Pale Lime. Now this Luna Moth card, this card comes up all the time for me in my own personal readings and in my readings for other people. 
of all of my cards, of all of the decks I use, this card is probably the loudest. Um, this card has a lot to say. I love this card. Sage, Mint, Sprouts, New Time, Chalkboard. This is a really cool card. Jade, Spinach, talks about being tough, that makes me laugh, and Dragon. I like how this deck has put the pinks in with the greens. This matches heart chakra work. So we think about the heart being green because it's between the yellow and the teal of the chakra system. But we also understand pink as a representation of the heart chakra because it's the combination of the, the, the top chakra and the bottom. So the red and the purple together or the red and the white, for the people that think of white as the crown chakra color, the red and the white come together or the purple and the red come together in the middle to create this pink. So where the green represents the heart chakra in the series of all of the chakras in that gradual movement of color, the pink represents the balance, the average, let's say, between the top and the bottom being the center. So it's a difference between being what, the mean and the median? No, the mean, because mean, median, and mode. Mode is the one that occurs the most often, right? Mean is the average and medium is the middle. I just went like <laughs> middle school math there, just. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> we have Pale Pink, Dusty Rose, Pink, Cotton Candy, Lotus Pink, Eros. Again, a word I've seen a million times, but I know I'll pronounce it wrong. I, I can see the flower. Damascus, Clary Sage, Eden, and then we start to move into the blues. Lapis Lazuli, Sapphire, Blue, Magi, Cornflower, Azure, Sky Blue, Cyan, turquoise, Neptune. Then we start to move into the deep blues and the purples. Grape. Oh my goodness, I love Wise Owl. Indigo, Imperial, Shapeshift, Lavender, Lilac, Mauve, Mellow, and Orchid. So we have 70 cards, roughly aligning with 10 cards each for the seven chakras. There aren't as many oranges, and the blues kind of run together between the throat and the third eye. But then we move into the neutrals. We have chocolate, heather, brown. I love that brown says ground thyself. Cafe, typha would be my guess. Canyon, shea, Jasper. Then we move out of the purpley browns. And then have tumbleweed. Fawn is a greenish brown. And then we have black, smoke, and white. At this point, we move into the color combinations of the deck. These are my favorite cards. Um, I may actually separate these back out and use these as their own little deck. 
I don't know. I never thought about that until just then, but that may very well happen. Watermelon. Oh, this card. Alchemy. That's beautiful. New Age. Kiss. Paradise. Iris. Blush. Spirit. Oh, what a card. Memory. Focus. Mm. Rain. Poison Ivy. Ghostland. That's a stunning card. Disease. Channel. I'm not even sure what those letters are. Is it Sekhmet? The tagline is Warrior Spirit. Archangel. Prometheus. La Luna. Retrograde. Oh no. Told you this deck was hard to manage. Ego. Minos. Sepia. I love that the representation of sepia is old thought. Now, I don't remember any other card other than white where the name and, and the, the focus here is in brown or is in black. This would have been really helpful on some of the yellow and the green cards and even to this card here. See how much helpful the black would have been on this card than the white. I'm curious as to why it wasn't used more widely. I had honestly assumed the black writing was only on the white card. Now this makes me curious. Lighthouse and Tincture. So there are a total of 108 cards. The way that I typically shuffle this deck is I separate it into two piles and then I shuffle each of these piles. I'll do a three card reading for us after <laughs> a decent amount of shuffling. So I shuffle each of the two piles. They tried to get away. As a half deck, they shuffle beautifully. They're a little tough to bridge though, when they're all in hand. And then I'll separate them again into stacks of two. And we'll do, a, and I'll start the process over. And who knows, we still may end up with three green cards. So friends, as I shuffle, I think of us as individuals. I think of us as a collective. And I trust that whatever comes up for us today, you're receiving this at the time it was meant for you. I trust that there's room for reflection for each of us and maybe, just maybe, an epiphany for one of us. Oh, 
Oh, what a fun reading. All right, so we'll start with when I do a three card reading. The first card is who we are presently, what we're bringing to, to the day as is. The second card is the invitation of what to look for, what to address throughout the day as it develops. Then the third card is guidance, what we can use to apply these two. So who we are today <laughs> is desert sand. Awaken your creativity. There, This is encouraging you to notice, to see that there is space for creativity, for inspiration in your day-to-day, -day, whether that is in an art project, whether that is in coloring, whether that is how you interact with someone, whether that is in cooking, but to allow little pockets of creativity in your day-to-day. -day. The invitation is sepia old thought. So um, this could go either way, but the gut feeling that I have today is this is a reminder to go back to the things that brought you, that brought you joy in your youth, in other phases of your life. It's funny, in the Soul Space Oracle reading that I just did, um, we drew a card that, um, a playful card that brought, that brought us back into remembering what used to create a sense of play and a sense of joy. And I feel like the sepia is having that same sort of invitation today, not creating new things, not going to the craft store and buying new things for a new product, for a new purpose, for a new project. Wow, it took me a while to get to that word. Um, <laughs> not going and getting things you need for a new project, but letting your creativity shine and show in things that you know from past personal experiences creates a sense of joy. And then the guidance of how we lean into our creativity and how we go back to, um, to old thoughts, old patterns that allow us to feel creative is rain, water energy, emotions, um, not letting our sense of should, <laughs> our sense of production, our sense of needing to check something off a list be a motivation for these things, but instead letting good feelings, happy feelings, positive energy um, be the guide as we look at our sense of creativity within um, our nostalgic experience. So I'd love to know if you have this deck, how you work with it. Um, if there's any decks you would like to see me review that I have it at this point, let me know. Um, I'm doing the Oracle decks first. Tarot was a little bit different for me, but those are coming. Um, again, I offer um, narrative alchemy readings where we end each reading with a card draw to sort of sum up the work that we've done. This deck comes up a lot. So I figured it was time to make a video. I offer also offer full moon and new moon circles via Zoom. We do that as a group. We do that live. And I have an online studio called The Still. We're currently studying the chakras um, through yoga, breath work, meditation. We meet once a week um, on Zoom as well. And we offer, we practice uh, Jin Shin Jitsu and tapping and just a lot of different modalities to connect um, to our self, um, our self-awareness and our self-identification through the chakras. All of that is linked below. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for coming on this tour with me and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.